Welcome to all of you looking to blend technology, teaching strategies, and emerging trends to create engaging educational experiences. So you want to create a lecture to send off to a student or a colleague, or maybe there's a technical problem or a concept on the computer that you want to show someone how to work it. You could try to type everything up and send it to them, but in today's world, video rules. So why not try to send them the information in a format that they truly want? But how do we create these videos? A simple way to do this is by screencasting. Now there are tons of tools out there to allow for screencasting. Some are free and some pay. So let's take a look at how one of these works to see if we can't create our first screencast. Screencast-O-Matic is a free screencasting site that allows you to create and share screencasts with others. They also have some pay plans which allow you to create and store more videos along with some additional features. But for what most teachers and beginning professionals will need, the free version of Screencast-O-Matic should be enough for us to decide if purchasing an upgrade account will be worth it. So let's go in and see how this tool works and create our first screencast. To begin, we'll need to create our free account by providing some of our general information. Now, Be sure to use an email address that you have access to as it will ask you to verify your account. Once your account is created and you log in, you'll make it to a general dashboard screen. Now, on the left, you can see menu options which right now, we don't have any videos. On the right, you can see an upload videos option in case we already have a video created on our computer and we want to store it here for sharing purposes. For right now, we're going to assume that we don't have a video, but rather we want to create one. So to do this, we're going to create on Make a Recording. Clicking on Make a Recording will download an install file to get Screencast-O-Matic onto your computer. Once the download is complete, go ahead and install the program. Now if you're using the same computer in the future, when you click Make a Recording, the software will just start running. But being the first time, we need to install it, and then it will pop up for us and look similar to what you see on the screen. Now once we are ready to record, there are a few options on the screen that we need to decide on. Screencast-O-Matic does have a set of tools for drawing and annotating, but we'll look at those in a different video. For right now, we just want to record our screen and our voice. Thus, we want to look at this main recording box. Now here you can see that you can record your screen, you can record yourself from a webcam, or you can record both at the same time, which makes your picture in the webcam hover over the screencast. For me, I'm going to go ahead and leave it as screen since my hair just doesn't look right today, so I don't want the webcam rolling. Next, you'll see that you have a max time of 15 minutes, and honestly, when doing lectures or help videos, you really don't want to go over 15 minutes anyways, as attention spans are way shorter these days. So thus, if you need more than 15 minutes, I'd look at breaking it up into multiple videos. However, if you really need one of the videos to be longer than 15 minutes, that is available in one of the upgrade packages if you want to pay some money. Now screen size has some defaults if you want to click on it and see those, or you can go to the edge of the dashed box and click and drag for a custom screen size. Now, either way works. Once you have the screen size selected, make sure you have working microphone plugged in. You know you will have a working microphone because the green bars will be jumping up and down as you make noise. When talking normal, you want the green bars to make it look like they're about middle way up on the bar. Move the microphone either closer or further away from you if you need to adjust it. If you don't have a microphone that works, they're easy to purchase online for about 20 or 30 bucks. Just make sure you get one that's a plug and play. Lastly, decide if you want computer audio. This is the sound that plays on your computer like dings and bings when things pop up. If you don't want that, leave it off. However, if you are demoing some kind of software or media or something like that, you may need the sound on, so you've got to make that call at this point. Lastly, you can toy around with the preferences if you want, but we're going to skip that because I'm just ready to start recording. When ready, you hit the red record button. A countdown will begin and when it's done, you start talking. When the recording starts, you'll see a little recording bar pop up with a pause and a timer. Now, there are some other options, but we're going to ignore those for now. If you need to take a break, click the pause button. When you're ready to resume, hit the record again, and it will pick up where you left off. 
The time is counting in minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. So if you have a time limit, keep an eye on that. If nothing else, when using the free version, be sure to get close to a wrap up spot when you get say near 13 or 14 minutes. Now when you're done presenting and ready to roll, just click pause and then click the done button. You'll have a few options that pop up, but for now, let's just go ahead and hit save and upload to get it where the world can see it. Once you click save and upload, a demo of your recording will appear. The biggest thing you need to check is that your audio came through at a volume that's decent for you to hear. If everything looks good, click your share option. Saving it as a video file is good for long term, but not for sharing, because it saves to your individual computer. Saving it to Google Cloud makes them have to download it, which is a little bit slower. Screencast-O-Matic and YouTube are streaming options, so those are going to be your ideal methods of saving it for what we want to do. I'm going to go ahead and send it to Screencast-O-Matic since we're just recording in it anyways. When clicking it, my options pop up, and for time's sake, I'm just going to go ahead and rename it. Otherwise, I can go in and fill out all these things like the description and such, but you can edit these later so it's no biggie at this point. When ready, I click publish, and there it goes. Once the upload is complete, you can click copy link to send it to students or clients or whoever needs it. If you ever need to edit the video or grab the link again, just head back to Screencast-O-Matic and after logging in, you can click videos on the dashboard. Hover over the video you want to see and click details. Edit what you want and you can always click that copy link button in the top right to grab the link again. And it's that easy to create your first screencast. Now let me give you two general quick tips. One. Be sure to do a test recording of about 10 seconds to truly check your audio because nothing is worse than recording 14 minutes to realize your audio wasn't working. You're going to have to re-record all of that. Record 10 seconds and if it's working, start over and then record the whole thing. Two, remember that when recording a lecture, you simply make your PowerPoint or Prezi or whatever you're going to use and then set the recording screen to the size of the PowerPoint or the Prezi. Then when you hit record, you start talking and move the slides as you normally would. Since the software is recording your screen, it records the slides as you move through them while you're also talking. So that will get you through your first screencast. It's pretty easy once you get it set up and there's a lot of tools on the back end that can help you clean it up and stuff. With that being said, we just did a basic overview of getting started on a recording, but what advanced tools would you guys like to see or be interested in? Also, this was just one screencasting tool. Are there others out there that you guys have heard of or that you've seen or that you might like us to test out? Maybe we can compare them and see which one works best for teachers and those in early design or education careers. Leave any suggestions on software or requests on advanced tools in the comments and we'll try to make sure that we can get some videos out there because screencasting can be a really powerful tool in the classroom when you really get into the nuts and bolts of it. Also. If you like content like this where we're talking about enhancing classrooms and trainings using technology and teaching strategies, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we're always trying to get new content out there to help you guys make these educational experiences just a little bit better. In the meantime, go out there, keep building, and we look forward to seeing what you guys create.